y'all, welcome back to another wonderful TOEFL IBT membership snippet, man. I am so grateful for this one today. We're going to be getting into function questions. So what are those pesky function questions anyways? Well, basically it comes down to, you know, the one where you probably get in discussions where they ask you at the very end, why did he say this? What does she mean? What does, it, it's always a what and a why, right? And so, obviously, I'm giving you half of this, you know, snippet. The rest is on my membership. So, if you guys are interested in that, let me know. I'll probably be debuting a lot of things coming up real soon and stuff like that. But, nonetheless, man, this is a really good one. I break it down. I give you three techniques in terms of answering these types of questions and understanding the general gist of everything. And then from there, obviously, with the process of elimination... Getting rid of some of those things and going from there. So, uh, you know, I really don't got much else to say. We're going to be getting into the Ralph Waldo Emerson's self-reliance essay. A couple other things and then it's going to get cut off. And with that being said, man, this is a good one. This is a real good one. And there are just so many more to come. This is a massive mini-series that I'm doing within, like, an entire, you know, within everything, you know. So, in saying that, people, without further ado, let's dive into this. Then right after that, we're going to write down a couple of things, see what's going on, see if we can compare our notes. And I'm going to give you three different strategies that we could break down. Remember, the question comes after. All right, so what's going to happen now? Both you and I are going to listen to this wonderful snippet. I'm going to make sure I put this down here so obviously no one can see what's going on. And from here on out, get your notes out. Get your note taken. It's time to kick ass. Three, two, uno. Today's class with a few points to consider while you're reading Ralph Waldo Emerson's essay, Self-Reliance. Remember, it's one of the most well-known essays, and you'll be comparing it with his other poems and literary works. I think you, as young people, will find this essay very meaningful, as you're likely at the point in your life where you're pondering the truth and where life will take you. You know, all those profound questions. Most of Emerson's works deal with one of his main beliefs about truth, and how we cannot be taught it. Emerson argues that truth is found within ourselves. One of the very first concepts that Emerson discusses in this paper is this truth, and the idea that it's within each one of us. While it is a little abstract, he feels strongly that each person should believe in his or her own thoughts and believe in oneself, the thought or conviction that is true for you as a person. He goes on to tie this notion in with a sort of universal truth, something that everyone knows but may not realize that they know. The vast majority of us are not in touch with ourselves, so we cannot recognize this profound truth. However, some people have sight of this truth, this universal truth, and are aware of it, express it, and don't just dismiss it like most do. These people are often considered geniuses and are unique, for example, Shakespeare. Believing in and trusting yourself, this is a key concept that Emerson discusses. In support of this point, Emerson first makes some important notes about conformity and criticizes those people of his time that abandoned their own mind, their own will in favor of conformity and consistency. He comments on how even though it opposes their own beliefs and identity, these individuals try to fit in with the rest of the world. He argues that it is optimal to be a nonconformist, to be yourself and ignore the opinions of others. You'll notice that he really highlights this whole argument throughout his entire work. Consider this and why these types of ideas would have been so relevant to the readers of his time while you're reading. Keep in mind that this essay was written in 1838, a time when U.S. citizens were more insecure as individuals and as Americans, and the nation was struggling to find its identity as a whole. Self-reliance was a novel concept then. It's a concept that I feel is still relevant today as it was back then. Emerson desired to make people think and to discover what it meant to be who they were. 
I also think that it's especially significant and relevant to adolescents like yourselves, who are at a time in your life where you're contemplating a lot of these questions about who you are, where you're going, and where you'll end up. Man, if you have not Listen or obviously read that essay. I do highly recommend it because Ralph Waldo Emerson, one of the greatest minds in human history, that self-reliance, just as she stated, still rings true today. How often do we find it in society that people conform to being who they're not just to be accepted? Oh, man. Self-reliance, man. It's one of the greatest essays in the world. You guys should pick that up. And check it out. So, anyways, in saying that, one of the best well-known essays, big questions, how we can't be taught truth. It's found within ourselves. A lot of us abandon our nimes, a little abstract. This is pretty straightforward, right? And so, with that being said, now we're going to listen to the last little snippet, right? And with the snippet, you play it once. It's going to be less than 10 seconds. And then we're going to go in and see exactly what this question is, all right? So I'm going to hurry up and open this. It's going to be Ralph Waldo or the Ralph Snippet. I coined the phrase. And I'm going to bring it up right here. So here we go. Three, two, one. Citizens were more insecure as individuals and as Americans. Citizens more insecure as individuals and Americans. All right. So why does the professor say this? Look at the left side of my screen. All right. Now. A, to suggest that the citizens of the United States haven't changed much over time. All right, we have C, to motivate the students to learn more about this particular type. Uh, what is it? This particular time period? Doubtful. C, to point out why Emerson's essay has lost some of its re uh, relevance. Hmm. Or D, to provide background for the concept she is explaining. All right. So what I do and what I write down next are the techniques to identifying and understanding what is going on. So what you have to do is pay attention to the playback section going into the techniques now. All right. So technique number one, check this out. Like I had already said, write down the key notes, the phrases. And again, America is still insecure. I'm not exactly sure if I had written that down. Let me see. Uh, pondering Americans insecure uh 18th yes there it is okay so here we go u.s citizens more insecure nation struggling to find its identity all right now what is the professor doing whilst like why is she like talking about this in general is it to motivate the students to learn more about this particular time period that's the one i had taken out immediately okay to suggest that the citizens of the United States have changed much over time. Let's continue looking. Now, check this out. When listening to the speaker, put yourself into their shoes to help you understand, okay? The speaker could be doing these certain bullet points that I've written down, directing, recommending, complaining, agreeing or disagreeing, questioning, confirming, or providing details. Now remember, US citizens weren't insecure then in 1838 because it was a nation trying to find its identity. Now, was she directed? Was she recommending, complaining, agreeing, disagreeing? Com she was literally confirming. Like, yeah, during this time frame when the essay had came out, this is when Americans needed it most because they didn't know what they were doing. So it could have been like a confirmation and providing details, right? And so with these intentions, obviously, like I've already told you, it's beneath the surface. These things aren't directed. Now, I wrote down directed just because, but to be honest with you, it's not a direct one. You have to read between the lines, right? So number two is connecting the playback section, okay, to the rest of the dialogue, such as what I was doing. Now, obviously, if you look at this and, you know, with this entire lecture in general, at the end of the lecture, you know, she talks about, you know, the, the historical reference and background motivation of Emerson and why he write, wrote that essay and whatnot, looking at everything from the very top of my note taken to the very bottom, right? And especially at the very end, she says Emerson desired to make people think. And she said it was important for adolescents who she was talking to in there because it was, they're at a time in their life that they're contemplating a lot of things, who you are and what you're doing. 
it's all based on identity, right? Because we don't know who our who we are, especially in high school. High school is a massive transformation period, right? So that's exactly what she's doing. So now I'm integrated everything I've written down and what is like the general gist of what he is trying to get across to everything and hello hello i am here to interrupt oh my god that's right that's the end that is the end people i hope you enjoyed that sorry that i cut that off midway through i know you guys are like ah i hate you i know god damn it i hate me too because i'm sexy no i'm kidding anyways i hope you guys enjoyed that again if you want the full thing check out my ibt membership if you're serious about you know getting a lot of the reading and all, just everything else that it has to offer and whatnot I'll be putting more things, including webinars and all that good stuff, onto, um, what is it, uh, you know, on this podcast in full coming up during the holiday season. There's going to be a lot of great things that I'm going to be giving away. And so make sure you follow me on my Arsenio ZSL podcast page. Give me a nice little rating and a nice little boost on my wonderful, uh, damn, I don't even remember what it was called. Um, what is it? Oh, the Apple Podcast Store. Give me a nice little rating. Let me know what you guys think. Follow me on my ESL page. Make sure you tag me, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next specific one that's coming up next Friday. So with that being said, stay tuned for more Over and Out.